Hey guys, how's it going? Omnix here. And today I want to talk about something that's a little bit different. I want to talk about Article 13. And I want to help you guys understand what it is and what effect it has on you, me and any online creator that you know for any platform. As of the 26th of March 2019, Article 13 has been approved and each of the countries within the European Union have been given two years to interpret the directive and put Article 13 and all the other articles into play. There really isn't much else we can do now other than contact local government bodies and ask them to be lenient with their ruling and interpretation. But what is Article 13? Well, Article 13 is part of a larger directive known fully as the European Union Directive on Copyright and the Digital Single Market. A bit of a mouthful. So we'll stick to calling it Article 13 for the rest of this. This larger directive consists of 24 articles and obviously the one that we're going to be speaking about is Article 13. The other articles contain information on definitions to clear things up they have information on exemptions and how you can be exempt from Article 13 or any related articles. And there's an article on text and data mining and how that will come into play under copyright when the law is in place fully. Essentially, all Article 13 does is require online platforms to filter the uploaded content and sift through and make sure that none of it's copyrighted. This means that if you or me or anybody uploads a copyrighted video to YouTube that it's up to YouTube to determine that the video that you're uploading is or does come under copyright and then remove it from its platform. Now this is already in play in YouTube but Article 13 is pushing this beyond just YouTube and it will incorporate sites such as Facebook, Twitter, Vimeo, Imgur, and really the list kind of goes on that any major website that has user generated content comes under article 13. However, the exemptions that I mentioned, you can be exempt from article 13 or the directive as a whole if you fulfill the following three rules. If the platform has been alive for less than three years, if you generate less than 10 million euros per year, and if you have less than 5 million monthly visitors to your platform. If you fulfill those three rules, then at this moment in time, you would be exempt from following the Article 13's procedure. But this is where the problems arise. They want an all-encompassing system that integrates every website and filters every piece of content that's been uploaded by everybody. And... For me, in order for them to do that, they would have to create a database that's accessible by every website that they could then compare to and see, oh, is this information copyrighted? Is this copyrighted? But at this moment in time, they've not come up with an agreed upon way on how they're going to filter the content. It's being left up to individual countries. There was an early suggestion about how to filter this content and... It was very similar to YouTube's content ID, which is okay some of the time. If you've been on YouTube for any length of time, like myself, you'll have seen videos on copyright claims and copyright strikes and how YouTube falsely flags videos for being copyrighted. It's infamously known for copyright striking and removing a video that had birds chirping in the background. Yeah, so if there were birds chirping outside my window right now and the video was picked up on that, this video could be copyrighted just because of the sound of the birds. You couldn't even see them in the video. So ultimately that rules out an automated system that relies on no user. The current system that's on YouTube at the moment flags videos and sends a notification back to the copyright holder. It knows to do this because they have input the copyright data into YouTube's database and YouTube can then pull from their own database and say oh look this video's copyrighted and alert the person who owns the copyright 
that person then has four options. They can either ignore it and not do anything. They can monetize it for their own gain. They can contact the person who uploaded the video and ask them to remove it or cut out the copyrighted section. Or they can just ask YouTube to remove it and YouTube is legally ob obligated under the DMCA Act to remove this co content from their website. One of the main problems with YouTube's system is that it's known for people abusing it and getting videos taken down or flagging videos to prevent the creator getting any revenue even if it's 100% their own work. And it's not ideal for a large scale system that they're wanting to implement. Another potential problem for this is that they're allowing countries to interpret the directive themselves and define their own rulings. This is pretty serious. You could have countries such as Germany and France being lenient towards it, not minding so much or not enforcing as much. And then you could have countries like um, the UK who are going to crack down on everything and not allow any posting whatsoever. I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but that's what could happen. This could go as far as preventing normal people from posting pictures online. Just pictures. If they go to an event like a gig or a football match, then they could be violating copyright law under this Article 13 by posting a picture on their, sna their Snapchat or their Instagram story. I think that's a bit harsh and allowing countries to choose that for themselves, it's not good. So, what effect will this have on YouTube and Twitch and other online platforms? For this, we'll focus on YouTube and Twitch because that's the main audience that I'm trying to get to and I feel like it might be easier to understand those two and then transfer that understanding to other sites. For places like Twitch and YouTube, a lot of the content is video game based. If you're watching a live stream on Twitch, then the person who is live streaming is already breaking copyright law today. The studio that created the game owns the rights to the game design, the appearance, characters in the game, sound effects, music, they own a lot. But you tend to find that when you're live streaming or creating video content that studios are pretty lenient already and they don't enforce the copyright law as much because they see that as free advertising. They're, oh look, so and so is playing this game. That's good advertising for us and people are watching them play. And it's also slightly harder for people to claim copyright on YouTube videos that are reviewing the game or reviewing a piece of copyrighted content. There are laws called fair use in America and permitted use in the EU. And right now, those two laws allow you to create content for parody, review and criticism are just three off the top of my head. You, so you can take content, make a joke out of it, review the content with your own. If I was to make content here, oh look at this video, then that's acceptable. I am then allowed to use the copyrighted content under that. This act is how channels such as Game Theory, the perfect example, they're constantly pulling lots of characters, lots of images for all different places and different video game genres and, ca and games and they're allowed to use all that content. It comes under fair use because they are criticising and reviewing the content that they're talking about. Overall, there's a lot of jumping through hoops to find out what's legal and what isn't. That's the way laws are. They're intentionally written, as I've discovered doing research for this video, to confuse people and not be exactly clear and use strange wording but the short of it is that right now if you're live streaming video games or content that's not music if you're live streaming something other than music or creating youtube videos on video games doing reviews so so on so on there's a big chance that you'll be safe nothing will change drastically I mentioned music streaming because even today streaming music in the background of your 
videos or your gameplay or whatever is not allowed. You, it will come through on the live stream and the people watching will be able to listen along with you. But you will notice that VODs get muted because of the copyright content. They don't want people going back and listening to that video just to hear the song. And that's why they get copyrighted. And in reality, if they're wanting to implement a filter that is able to actively filter live streamed content, that's a bit away. So in terms of live streaming, you're safe. In terms of YouTube, if you know what you're doing and what laws you're following, then you will be safe. Personally, I don't think this is going to be as big a problem for content creators as people originally thought. The problem lies on how this automated system or whatever system they bring in determines whether or not your content is copyrighted already. If it's an automated system where they are constantly filtering and a computer is running through to see whether or not it's copyrighted, then there's problems there because the computer isn't always right. We've seen that with YouTube's content ID system. It's not 100% accurate all the time. But in reality, if you're following the laws and not using copyright content, then you should be good. Like, there's no reason to worry. Another problem that could arise is for memes. Now, Article 13, I've avoided saying it, has been known as the meme ban and really that's the kicker i've seen a lot of places say that memes will be banned and i've seen a lot of places that say memes won't be banned now for me if it's an automated system the way i see it is that if an automated system is filtering the images that are being used for memes and if it gets a certain percent of a match so say 90 percent a lot of memes are just the same picture with different text. Sometimes the te that change in text might not be enough. And that's where I think the meme killer aspect of this comes in. It could be a bit problematic. But overall, I don't think it's going to be as bad as it's made out to be. And I think the majority of us are going to be fine. Yes, it's not an ideal system. And having everything filtered and copyrighted is going to make it harder to upload content. That's not false. But overall, if you're watching what you're doing, then you're going to be fine. I wouldn't worry about it until each country comes up with his own rulings on the matter. The problem with that is then some countries will be stricter than others and a lot of content will be prohibited for viewing in those countries potentially. Kind of similar to how nowadays there's copyright content in certain countries that can't be viewed elsewhere. And a good example of that is BBC, which is the British Broadcasting Company. They have a bunch of stuff on YouTube. I can watch it fine. I'm, I live in the UK. That's fine. But other people can't watch it. There's countries out there that aren't able to access that content. It'll just be more of that. There'll be more barriers and... When we're pushing for an open and free internet that you're allowed to publish your mind and your thoughts on things and share with the world what you're doing, then it's not a good thing really. Hopefully that put you guys at ease a little bit, maybe a better understanding, I don't know. It's really difficult to understand and I tried my best to research it and understand it myself. If there's any questions you've got, feel free to leave a comment down below, I'll try my best to answer. I might not get a, the answer you were looking for, but I'll try my best. If you guys like this, feel free to hit like or subscribe. There will be more videos coming soon. We'll be jumping back to the streaming tutorials for beginner streamers soon. And yeah, I will catch you guys in the next one. See ya.